This is going to be the solutions for the Math 200 final exam for um, April of 2012. Let's uh, take a look at question one. So the first question is to give an example of a rational number which is not an integer and which is also less than negative five. Um, first of all, what is a rational number? Well, it's basically uh, just a fraction. So when they say this term here, rational number, you should think of that as a fraction a over b. Um, a and b are integers. I'll use this symbol here, z. Um, and the bottom integer is not allowed to be zero, right? Now, how can we find a, a rational number which is not an integer? and is less than negative five. Well, I think that maybe sometimes a picture is helpful. If we draw a picture here, let's say, I don't know, negative five is here. Negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, etc. Um, so this would be negative six, of course. We want some number that's down here somewhere below negative five, but it is not allowed to be an integer. So if we said negative six, that would not be a good answer because it's not less, or it's not an, it is an integer. So we need a fraction, which is not an integer, that's less than negative five. I think maybe the easiest way to do this would be just remember that, for example, let me get a different color here. This is one half, right? This would be negative one half. This would be negative three halves, right? And um, negative five halves. Oh, something's wrong here. Um, sorry. I uh, let me back up there. One half is actually here, right? <laughs> sorry about that. One half is right in between zero and one. So this is negative one half, negative three halves. If we just keep going like this, I think we're going to find ourselves an answer, right? Negative seven halves, negative nine halves. And this one here, we can use that one, negative 11 over two. That would be a perfectly fine answer. But truthfully, there's uh, tons of answers uh, that you could use. Um, anything, it, like let's say you, if you tried to use something like say negative 12 over two, that's actually not a good answer because even though this is a fraction, it looks like a fraction, it's really just the same as negative six, right? And that's an integer. And we're told that we are not allowed to use integers there. So this would be a perfectly fine example. Um, let's move on to the next one. Evaluate this absolute value expression. Well, that's pretty easy. The absolute value just means to ignore the sign of the number that's inside those absolute value bars. So the absolute value of negative 10.5 is 10.5. And the absolute value of 1.2 is 1.2. And now that the absolute value bars are gone, it's very easy to just do the subtraction. So this would be 9.3, right? Um, all right, that's easy. And now we have to simplify this expression to a rational number. We could use our calculator, but uh, they probably would prefer us to use our just do it by hand. How about we do it by hand and then we'll check it on the calculator. I'll just recopy the expression before I start it. Whoops. All right, so I'll leave the, actually I'm gonna change everything into a fraction. This decimal, I'm gonna make it into a fraction. Uh, 1.5, that's right here, right? That's three over two, right? So 1.5 is three over two. How about I write two and make it look like a fraction by putting it over one? Um, two plus four is six. 2 squared is 4, and minus minus 2 is really plus 2, right? And 
why don't I make that look like a fraction by putting it over one? Now I'm looking at all these denominators and I know when I add fractions, I have to have a common denominator. So what's the least common multiple of two, one, four, and one? Well, that's gonna be four, right? So I wanna make all of these fractions out of four. Um, you know, this one's already out of four, so I can just recopy it. But how do I make this fraction out of four? Well, it's a two right now, and it has to become a four, so it's like I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by two here. Two times two is four, three times two is six. To make this one become a four, I need to multiply it by four. Two times four is eight. And same thing here, this is also eight over four. Now that the denominators are common, it's gonna be very easy to find the answer. It's just six plus eight plus six plus eight, right? Uh, six and eight is 14. We have another 14 here, so that's 28 over four, right? And that works out to seven. 20, I mean, you know this fraction line means divide, right? 28 divided by four, just like uh, we're used to writing it like that maybe. But uh, at this level of math, we don't really use the division sign anymore. We use the fraction sign. So the answer for that question is seven. Why don't I just quickly check that in my calculator? Um, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, so the answer there is seven. So that completes question one. All right, let's take a look at number two now. We have a little algebra equation here to solve. This is a linear equation. The reason I call it linear is because every term has an x in it. There, or, uh, there, all the all the variables are just x, as opposed to having x squareds, because that would be a quadratic equation then. So this is a linear equation, and it's pretty easy. The idea is this: we want to get rid of all brackets first. We want to multiply everything out to get rid of all the brackets. Then we want to get all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other side. And then we're going to combine like terms, and then we're going to divide. Um, why don't we just start, and you'll see how all those steps play out. I'm just going to start by recopying the question. I usually like to do that. So like I said, the first thing we should do is get rid of all these brackets. Multiply out anything that we have to to get rid of those brackets. Let's start by getting rid of these inner set of brackets first. Let's just distribute this minus sign across to both terms. So we get minus 2.5x minus 1. You know, really, it's like there's a negative 1 here. And I'm doing negative 1 multiplied by 2.5x, which gives me negative 2.5x. And then we have a negative 1 times a positive 1, which is a negative 1. Uh, what about over here? Well, this 2 can be multiplied across, so it's minus 8x minus 4. Uh, the right-hand side, all the brackets are gone, but on the left-hand side, we still have one more set of brackets here. Let's multiply this 2 across, and, uh, and, then, and then we will have gotten rid of all the brackets. 2 times 3, 6x. 2 times this is uh, minus 5, right? And then minus 2 this side just stays the same. So now that all the brackets are gone, my next goal is to get all the x terms on one side and all the number terms on the other side. It doesn't really matter what side you do which on. Why don't I bring the all the x's to the left side and all the numbers to the right hand side? Well, the 6x and the 5x here, those are fine. I can leave those because they're already on the left side. When I bring these two terms here over though, just remember when you move something across the equal sign in algebra, it reverses its sign. So this positive 3x becomes a minus 3x. This minus 8x becomes a positive 8x. The negative four just stays still. And the negative two here, I bring it over, it becomes a positive two. Now I just wanna mention that I can put the positive two here or I could put it here. Both are fine, okay? I'll just put it here. Uh, now that we have like terms on each side, let's combine them up. 6 minus 5 is 1x. 1x minus 3x, negative 2x. Negative 2x plus 8x is 6x. And that's negative 2. So now we divide. You know, some people uh, just, some people recopy it and then divide both sides by 6. And some people just right divide by six right on this line both both are okay whichever you prefer since this is a beginning a beginner's class i'm just going to recopy it and then divide um 
6 divided by 6 is 1, and 1x one is just x. And negative 2 over 6 is negative 1 over 3. The way I got that, by the way, is I just found the common factor of 2. And in my head, I just divided top and bottom by 2. We should always give our answer as a simplified fraction, right? Now, is there any way we can test if this is the right answer or not? Well, yes, there is. To see if, uh, to see if our answer of negative 1 third works, we could just use our calculator and put it in each side of this equation and see um, if we come up with the same thing on each side. So let's just quickly do that. It's not really part of the problem, but uh, it's worthwhile because if you catch a mistake by doing this quick check um, and you fix it and then get the right answer, you'll save yourself some marks, right? So when I put it on this side, I get uh, negative 2.3 repeating, which is the same as negative 7 over 3. What about if I put negative one third in this side? Let's try that. So let's see here. Um, I'm just doing this in my calculator here. I also get the same thing, negative seven over three. So that's that uh, convinces me that I do have the right answer there. And uh, it's worthwhile doing that little check. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. Two X plus one. Uh, let me just uh, recopy it here. This one is a little bit special. It's not hard, but you just need to know what's going on. So if this is your problem here, one second here. How do you handle this? Well, I think if you're not really looking at it too carefully, your first instinct would be to multiply that across. And then you see, oh, I have the same thing on both sides. If you do what I told you before and bring all the x's to one side and all the numbers to the other side, you get this. And then you get like 0x equals 0. I sure hope you don't do this for your next step because you're never allowed to divide by 0, right? You know, 0x is just 0, so you get 0 equals 0. And at this stage, some students start to panic and they don't really know what's going on here. Um, the truth is that this equation here is actually valid for every value of x. No matter, this is this is actually called an identity, right? This is not really an equation, this is an identity. This is, this is true for all values of x. So um, if we wanted to give an answer here, maybe we could say something like, uh, I'll just bring this over here. Uh, this is an identity right so it is true for all x in r so in other words every number i.e every number is a solution you know back here on this previous question we only had one number that was a solution namely negative one-third but in this one Every number is a solution. There's actually three cases, right? Three possibilities when you're given an equation like this. Um, the first case is like we saw up here, that there's only one answer. The second case is like this, where there are infinitely many answers. Every number is an answer. The third situation is when there's no answers, right? Um, if I give you this equation, let, let's even though it's not asked, let's just pretend. If I gave you this equation, x equals x plus 1, this is a, an example of the third style, which uh, has no solutions, right? If you tried to do this one and you got X, you do it the way I mentioned, would bring all the x's to one side, you'd get this, and then you get zero equals one. You know, back here, zero equals zero. That's a true statement, right? It's nothing wrong with that. But back here, this is a false statement, right? So that means there are no solutions. So basically what I'm saying here is if you work out your algebra equation and you get x equals a nice number, that's perfectly fine. You know you're in the case where there's only one answer. But if you work out your equation and you get 0 equals 0, then you know you're in the situation where the equation is true for every number. Finally, if you work out your equation, you get like 0 equals 1 or 1 equals 5 or something. That's obviously false, and what that tells you is that you're in the kind of style of equation which actually does not have any solutions at all. 
All right, so this wasn't even part of it. I just wanted to mention it to complete our discussion. And uh, our final answer for this one, the first A is X equals negative one third. And um, our second answer is that it's true. Uh, the second equation is true for every number. And um, that completes this question.